Review a generative design study. In this video, we'll review study warnings and we'll use the previewer. In Fusion 360, we want to carry on with our generative suspension design. At this point, we have all the information required to set up and run our generative design study. Keeping in mind that manufacturing methods, materials, and objectives and limits are automatically set at their default. So if you get to the point where you set up your preserved geometry and you set up your loads and constraints, then you can theoretically solve your generative design study. But it's always a good idea to review what you've set up to make sure that it matches your intent and then use the previewer and the pre-check to make sure that everything is in place. So first, let's take a look in the browser at structural study one. We're gonna be taking a look at our preserved geometry and make sure that we've accounted for all the obstacles. This is an extremely important step because oftentimes you can go through the process of setting everything up and forget to put a bolt through a hole or some sort of obstacle. Now, if we forget to do that, what ends up happening is the generative design outcomes can build inside of those areas. In some cases, that's not a deal breaker because we can always post-process the design afterwards and add things back like a tapered hole for a ball joint. But it does become problematic if it's including those because they are structural. So it's always a good idea to double check and make sure that everything is in order. For example, that we have our shock obstacle, that we have obstacles around the mounting point for the shock, as well as our tool axis, that we have obstacles inside of all of the preserved geometry where we don't want to build. And in this case, it's also important that we have some sort of constraint for building the suspension arm so that we can rotate the wheel 35 degrees in each direction. So it looks like we do have all of those in place. We also have included a symmetry plane. So we know that we are gonna be using that symmetry plane to help with the solve and the outcome. And then we also have our customized objectives. We're maximizing the stiffness and our limits are a factor of safety of two and the target mass of about 10 pounds or four and a half kilograms. Then our manufacturing methods. We're still using the default unrestricted, but we've removed additive and three axis machining. And we've added back die casting. For the materials, notice that under the die casting materials, it's listing all of them. And this is because the way that we set up our manufacturing methods and materials, we included the materials for all study types. Keeping in mind that in general, you wanna focus on materials that are only applicable for certain types of manufacturing methods. So for example, die casting, we would wanna make sure that the materials that we chose for die casting were specific to that method. So now that we have everything set up, we wanna make sure that we take a look at pre-check. Pre-check can always have some insight into whether or not a study will fail. In this case, one of the warnings is telling us that the geometry may be too large to 3D print. That's fine because we don't have an additive manufacturing method, so that warning doesn't really apply to us. It also tells us that it might affect the ability to estimate the cost of that. Again, we're not 3D printing, not using additive. It's not a problem in this case. However, the first warning is telling us that some construction planes are hidden. If they're defined as symmetry planes, they are still included in the generation. So, all it's really telling us is that the symmetry plane that we've defined is currently hidden. And that's really not a problem. It's not something that's gonna prevent us from solving. But if we bring that mid plane back and we take a look at our pre-check, you can see that the warning is gone. This always happens if we have geometry that's hidden. If we hide our preserved geometry and we take a look at the pre-check, you can see that it's not giving us a warning for the preserved geometry. but if we were to hide it under model components or we were to do something along those lines, then we might get a warning that tells us that we're missing or some of the geometry is hidden. So keep in mind that sometimes the warnings in pre-check are really just giving us a, a hint at what's going on. They might tell us what our part might be too large for certain cost estimation. But in some cases, we might have pre-check warnings and that's still fine for us to solve. Now that we know that those warnings are not going to affect our solve, we can move on to the previewer. The previewer is an extremely important step. And you notice here that the previewer has failed. It does not support remote constraints or remote forces or inertial relief or symmetry planes. Now, 
Because we have a symmetry plane turned on, it's telling us that the previewer will not work. So what we can do to get around that is we can temporarily remove the symmetry plane. So I can cancel it, and then I can take a look at the previewer. What we are expecting to see with the previewer is that we're getting a build volume. For this process to work, generative design first connects all of the preserved geometry that we defined, and it goes around all of the obstacles that we also defined. And as it goes through these iterations, it begins to solve for the stress risers in the design. If it has really low stress concentration, it begins removing material and testing it again. Keeping in mind that it's testing for all the load cases and loads that we defined in our study. So as we go through this process, we also do have the option to increase the detail level. And when we use a high detail level, it'll restart the process and it'll begin looking at that build volume again. Keeping in mind that the previewer is not strictly needed for us to solve, but it's always a good reminder if we've maybe omitted some of the obstacles or if we really need to include a starting shape, it would really help us understand if we can solve this or if we have problems. But once again, the previewer isn't strictly required. It's not gonna give us an idea what the final generative design is gonna look like, but it does give us good insight into how the process starts and whether or not we might have problems there. Now that we understand that, I'm gonna bring back the symmetry plane by going into my construction, selecting that mid plane and saying, okay. Once again, through this course, we're not gonna solve this. Every time we do solve a generative study, it is going to use cloud credits. So keep in mind that each solve is going to have 33 cloud credits required. So if you do want to solve this and you want to review it, I would suggest that you go back and maybe add some manufacturing methods, maybe explore some other design criteria and take a look at the solve. Uh, I have solved this and we are going to look at some of the outcomes so you can get an idea of, of what we're actually gonna be looking at but just keep in mind that it's not required that you do solve it. So as we look through some of these outcomes, again, if you don't solve, you will not be able to follow along. But what we can see is that we are going to have some very similar results for certain types of materials. So when we look at some of our filters, we can filter by visual similarity. You can see there are groups where we have maybe five that are of the same visual similarity. Now, one thing that you're not seeing is that I actually have multiple studies solved in here. So these outcome filters are going to include all of those studies, even if they're not visible here. But as we look at these, we have sections of converge, which means that it was able to get down to those objectives and limits that we set. And then we have ones that are completed. These are ones that have solved through a number of iterations, but they weren't able to get all the way to whatever criteria we had. And then you can see that some failed. They just didn't work for whatever reason. And we can take a look at those types. We can understand better why they failed potentially by taking a look at some of their properties. When we go down to the completed and the failed, you can see that the factor of safety set was two. And you can see that cast iron unrestricted didn't, didn't work in these cases. And again, it's really depending on the setup the materials you choose, and how much detail you put into. When we look through here, we also wanna note that we have some icons. In this case, these are showing experimental solver was used. When we look at the icon above, it tells us that it included symmetry. So it is symmetric about that midplane that we selected. If we wanna dive deeper into these, we can compare them by selecting multiples. And maybe I wanna look at this one here, and maybe I'll pick one more. Maybe I like this one here, and then I can compare those. When we compare them, we can sync them up, we can rotate them around, and we can really decide what kind of geometry will work best for us. Now, these are just rather large. They're not something that I would really consider, but these two are very similar. Notice that the one on the left has a lot more material here, and when we look, it's an aluminum, and when we look on the one on the right, it's a cast iron. So obviously the cast iron has different material properties and we can see that it's actually using quite a bit less material in terms of the volume. We can see that it's 41.04 and this one's 105. But when we look at things like the mass, 
10 pounds for the aluminum and 10 pounds for the cast iron. So while visually they look very different, the mass properties, the factor of safety, these things that they're trying to funnel down to and converge on are very similar. And we just have to make decisions as to which one works the best for us. Once we decide on one that is ideal for our instance, we can turn it into a 3D model by selecting design from outcome or selecting mesh. When we turn off the design preview, what we're actually looking at here is the underlying mesh that was used to solve it. We can take a look at things like the stress concentration. Areas of green are ideal, blue are low, and red is high. So if we roll back in the iterations, we go back to the original build, which looks very similar to our previewer, we can see that areas of blue, low concentration, have material removed each iteration. If we go further a little bit, we're getting closer and closer to ideal, and then it goes past ideal. And if there are areas of high stress concentration, then it begins adding material back. This one, it appears that it kept removing material. We don't really have any areas of high stress concentration, so the results look pretty good. But once again, you are not required to solve the study because we will be solving some generative studies throughout the course. But this is a good way for us to get into actually taking a look at setting up our design space and understanding the process of setting up a generative design when we start with an assembly, especially one that has some motion. Make sure that you always save and you save often so that way you can always preserve your work and come back to it at any point in the process from any of those previous versions. And once you have saved, let's go ahead and move on to the next steps.